This tutorial is going to show you how to record most games on your PC via open broadcasting software or OBS. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually go to the OBS website. That's obsproject.com and download OBS Studio you see here. Once you have that downloaded and installed, uh, you should be able to open it and get a window that looks kind of like mine. Now it may look like this may have these two windows here. If you look at my OBS window, you can just click the studio mode and go to the uh, basic window here. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is create a scene. I created this tutorial recording scene, but essentially you come down here, press the create scene button, add a scene, name it something uh, useful, wherever you want it, and uh, hit OK. And we're going to create a profile. Now, I can't show the profile window while I'm recording, unfortunately, but uh, it should give you an options of things like duplicate and new. We want to add a new profile. So you got to name it wherever you want. This is basically a set of settings for your recordings. After that, we're going to add a source. Now, for the sake of this, we're going to add a game capture source. So you get here and call again, call it whatever you want, um, something that you'll be able to recognize. I'm going to turn it off for the moment here, but you want to leave this make source visible, checked, and create new. And that'll bring up this next window here. Once you get to this window, you'll want to go to the mode selection and capture foreground window with hotkey. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to capture the cursor. For some games you want it, for others you won't. Um, you can set different scenes up for this as well. And once you have that selected, you'll want to hit OK. So let's go into the settings. We go to the settings here, you see this window, I'm just going to scroll it over so you can see it on its own along with the OBS window here. And we're going to go through all of the settings. Now for the sake of this, we're only going to be doing a local recording, so I won't be covering the stream window. But for the most part, you'll be able to leave most of these settings at defaults. Uh, the base OBS setup is pretty solid, and you really won't have to worry about most of those settings. We we'll go down to output. Uh, again, we'll only be doing local recording for this, but uh, you can see the streaming settings are here as well. Now you want to set where you want to record this stuff to. You can set this individually per profile. Uh, beyond that, you want to go for recording quality. I typically go with indistinguishable quality. It's a large file size, but it's not as large as a lossless file, which is uh, incredibly huge. Definitely always go with MP4 recording format. That's essentially what is used everywhere and is easily uploaded to YouTube. And for the encoder, I typically prefer the software encoder, which uses your processor. However, if you have a very, very good video card, you may sometimes want to use the hardware recorder, depending on what you're recording. Some games I use the hardware recorder if they're not well optimized for the processor. So if we go into audio, again, you want to be keeping most of these settings the same. The most important is that you go to desktop audio device, make sure this is set to your specific one. Um, I find that setting it to default doesn't always work, even if your default is set in Windows. And if you go to the mic again, make sure you have it set. You can see here I have it set to my Yeti microphone. Now going to video, I won't be able to go through these again because I'm recording, but essentially you want to set your base resolution and your scaled resolution. Now the difference here is that your base resolution is what you are recording at and your scaled resolution is what you want to output to. You can set this down to 720 if you want smaller files and if you want to upload smaller files or if you're streaming and you need uh, lower quality to stream out, then that works. Typically for the downscale filter, I'll go with the uh, Lang sauce. You can also do by cubic. And for SPS values 30 or 60, I prefer 60 myself. Now if we go to hotkeys, um, I only set up a few hotkeys, but you can see here there's a ton of options for you to set. You can set uh, hotkeys to change to different scenes and things of that nature. For myself, I just have F9 as my start and stop recording, basically a toggle. And if you go down here, I see this is the most important one for our purposes here, is the game capture, uh, is the thing we set up. Basically, you want to set a hotkey for that, so you can press that once you bring up the game, and it'll drop it into OBS. I typically also have a mic mute here, so I can e easily toggle to mute if I need to. Essentially, if I need to cough or something, then I'll just hit the mute real quick. And under advanced, uh, again, you're probably not going to change most of these things. You can check my settings here to see uh, compared to yours and the process priority. I have mine set to high. Typically speaking that my computer could run it. 
so I want to make sure the recording is smooth, but you maybe I'll set this a little lower if you have a less powerful PC. And under recording, make sure that you have your file name formatting. I typically just type in the name of the game, but you can use time codes. You can see here it lists all the different options that you have available. So after we've done that, you're pretty much all set. Uh, make sure you go over to the mixer here. You may want to check the properties, make sure it's using the correct options. And uh, as an example here, if I just went over to my other scene, my default game scene, you will see Dark Souls pop up on screen. Um, and that is using the game capture. And essentially it is good to go. It is already recording. Um, in this case, you would have to press your hotkey and then start your recording and you're good to go. And then when you're done, just hit stop recording saves the file to the location that you specified and that's it that's all there is to it